beim Zustieg zu halten. During the approach in alpine climbing, it is extremely important to put your helmet on in good time, because other rope teams, animals or the wind can cause rocks to start falling. And it would of course be unfortunate if you got hit by a rock during the approach. It is essential you complete the partner check before you start climbing the rock face. You should each check the roping up knot, whether the belay device is properly fastened, whether the carabiners are properly locked, and whether the harness is properly fitted and secured. Before you start climbing, you should take another look at the topographic map to see the exact route, and especially the length of the pitch, so that you can find the anchor properly. You should of course also decide whether you're going to alternate the lead climber, or whether you'll have the same lead climber throughout, as you'll need to divide up the equipment accordingly. During alpine climbing, particularly on casual routes, I of course occasionally have climbing bolts that I can clip. However, they are often further apart than they would be in a climbing gym. If I'm clipping a protection point, I need to make sure of a few things. The most important thing when clipping protection points is that I really need to do so from a stable position. Simply put, I need to avoid falling. When I'm in a stable position, I then have to clip the rope into the quick draw correctly. This means the rope coming from below should be fed through the carabiner from behind and then return out the front to me. The worst case scenario is that it could come unclipped during a fall if the rope is fed through the other way around. If I clip the quick draw onto the bolt, I need to make sure of two things when alpine climbing. Firstly, if it's a ring bolt, the quick draw's gate should face away from the rock face. And I should ensure that I clip the gate in the opposite direction to the direction I'm climbing in. For example, if I'm climbing to the right, the gate should point to the left. This prevents A, the quick draw from becoming unclipped in the bolt, and B, the gate from opening when bearing a load. And a handy piece of equipment while alpine climbing is an extendable quick draw. If a carabiner is lying in a bad position on an edge and gets bent under load, then I can take an extendable sling and prevent it from bending under load. Or, if the rope path is poor and causes a lot of rope friction, I can hereby reduce the rope friction and allow the rope to run more freely. Although the situation at the belay is always different, belaying itself is actually simple. The belay must be an island of safety for us. If I want to set up a belay, I need anchors, at least one, but normally several that I can connect to the belay. These could be bolts, pitons, nuts, rocky knoll slings or tunnel slings that the load will be distributed across. The belay itself should be redundant, meaning that if one of the anchors fails, at least one more will be there to prevent the fall. I set up the belay so that in the end I have a central point, and the central point is then connected to all the anchors in the belay. And that's the point to which I can clip on my personal anchor and my partner's anchors. There are two fundamentally different ways to set up a belay. One is the series connection, and the other is the distribution of load. I use the series connection if I have at least one solid anchor in the belay, something like a bolt. And I then do it so that the load is the bolt, and I set up the second as a series behind it. The second anchor is not put under any load, however. If I don't have a bolt at the belay and only have traditional climbing gear anchor points, I then set up a connected triangle of forces which guarantees a distribution of load across the different anchors. The belay is definitely one of the more complex topics in alpine climbing, but it is also the most important as it's the central protection point for the entire climb. When I've mastered it, nothing can get in the way of a successful climb. An alpine climb doesn't finish when you reach the summit. It's not over until you're safely back on the ground, or even better, at home. And if the descent takes you over complex terrain, gravel fields, or rappelling slopes, you have to be particularly careful.